Today we're going to do something a little bit unusual. Slipped rib. I'm already cast on in waist yarn so I can hang my river weights. Over here we're set for N. I'm using stitch size 3 on each bed and that's working for my worsted yarn. But it's going to depend on what you're doing. We're starting out without these engaged, but we'll be engaging them later. The river stays on normal knitting throughout. Coming over here, I have a one by one card. That's card number one in many sets, and you may have punched yourself several over the years to replace the worn out one. This is about due, but we'll make it through, I think. And it is locked on the row where I finished the last swatch, so that'll be adequate. I'm bringing all the main bed needles all the way forward for convenience. I've knotted a loop into the yarn, hanging it on the left needle, and I am going to, whoops, I'm going to double E-wrap all the way across. This is not the only way that you can start this stitch off. In fact, the tubular cast on would be more traditional, but I am preferring to do so this time because I want the firmness of this edge. I cannot just E-wrap. First of all, it's not going to be as firm as I want if I do, but I also need to be able to go straight into um, ribbing, full needle rib from here, and it does it better with the double E-wrap. In case you've never done it before, I do have a whole movie on cast-ons, but we'll quickly review. Under two, over one, pull back. Under two, over one, pull back. And you're making a stitch, a true stitch, every time getting the needles into normal working position. You have control over the size of that stitch. The name of my cast on video is Casting On with the Answer Lady in case you do need more help. And on this last one, there's already a loop on after the first wrap, so it's your choice whether to wrap and pull through, but I decided to do so. Got to get this yarn tail down out of the way, because with what happens next, it truly would be in the way. I'm reaching down and giving my weights a downward tug as well. Now, I want to set up for full needle rib, so I need to rack a little bit so that the needles alternate when all come out. We don't want any slamming into each other. And I'm going to put up the same needle count on the river bed as on the main bed. Now with both beds set to knit normally, this is the hardest row of the whole project. Knit across. Every river needle picked up a loop of yarn, but they're not true stitches yet. Now remember, I already have weights on here. This would not work at all without. Now I'm going to knit one more plain row. Now there are true stitches everywhere. I am setting the main carriage to KC. And it should select needle. It did select every other needle, just as we want. Out of your view, I'm pushing the card into the normal advancing position, and I am pushing in both part buttons on the main bed carriage only. Now we want to knit however many rows we're going to use. Watch what happens. On the river bed, every needle knit it. On the main bed, some needles did not knit. But you don't see floats of yarn because those, the yarn passed from, say, this needle to here and then here, another river stitch, before knitting this needle. Uh, normally, on single bed slip, there'd be a straight piece of yarn right here. But there's not. And that's why. I've finished knitting all the rows that I want, 
and I want to bind off, I'm going to rack so that the nails oppose directly and go ahead and transfer them all to the main bed. It'll just be easier for me to bind off from there. In this case, I'm not really going to bind off. I'm going to knit one plain stock in that row and drop it off the machine because I have a special way that I want to bind off and I want to do it off of the machine. But normally, if I was just knitting this piece of fabric, after this transfer, I would bind off around the gate pegs. And what is this fabric good for, you may ask? Well, it's thick and warm, so that's one thing. It still behaves like a knit, but it is not quite as stretchy. So for an instance where you want a firm fabric, I'm making slippers, designing some actually, and I do want a firm fabric. This is very helpful. Other uses that where a firm fabric could be desirable are making something like a purse or a bag. Possibly a play mat for a baby on the floor. Both the thickness and the firmness would be a good thing. Uh, possibly something for pet bedding. Ditto. Same advantages. So I'll get this off and we will have a look. One finished slipper. I put my foot in it one time and you can see how nicely it holds its shape. That's one of the advantages of this fabric. And here is the fabric itself. If you take a good look, you will see that there are two different sides. Either one can be the right side. But this one, where the tucking occurred, is going to be more textured. And the other side is going to be smoother. I've got the smooth side out. But it's a judgment call. You could decide on either one. And they're not so terribly different. If you needed, say, a purse flap or a collar lapel to reverse. Let's turn this back like a collar lapel. That'd probably work out fine on a jacket. This would be a good jacket fabric. 